Welcome fellow Haskellers to another 47 degrees Haskell video. In this occasion we're going to be dealing with some k-tests of Haskell in the awesome website Code Wars. So the challenge that we're going to discuss today, we're going to use it as an exercise for learning, it's called Make the Dead, dead Fish Swim. And it's going to request us to write a little parser. It says, write a simple parser that will parse and run dead fish. Dead fish has four commands, each one character long. I increments the value, initially starting at zero. D decrements the value. S squares the value. O outputs the value into the return array. So it always has to return an array of ints. Invalid characters or commands should be ignored. So for example, if we say that we're going to parse I, 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 S, D, O, S, O, the output should be this one. Okay, so there are, of course, multiple ways of dealing with this. And the first solution I came up with was using recursion. I think the solution was quite nice. So let's consider that. And then we're going to refactor that to use some crazy stuff, but maybe uh, you will a be able to learn something from it, or maybe you will hopefully will enjoy it. So let's open our dev environment. Here we have our parse function and we're going to define a function that we're going to call go and it's going to start by zero. And we're going to define go where go is a function that is going to take an int, then is going to take a string and finally it's going to return the list of ints that we're looking for. So all good to go. And let's define what we want it to happen. If we are fin done uh, parsing the string, we're basically, this is the, the stop case of our recursion. We're just going to return an empty list. If the command we want to interpret now, it's i, we are going to call back our function and this number, which is going to be our accumulator, so to speak, is going to be increased by one. And then we decide to parse the rest of the string. And the rest of the commands are going to be very similar to this one. So for example, let's handle now the decrement when we parse the D this is going to do x minus one. And if you're noticing, since we are uh, using the cons operator in Haskell, we're actually removing the first jar of the string and then recursively continue with the rest of the function with the rest of the commands that might be might end up in the string. So now we handled our uh, decrease case as well. And now let's handle the s case. In this case, we're going to do exp by two and then we want to handle the case in which we said it's going to append to the end. Well in this case we can use the cons operator back and obviously we are adding now to the end result the the state that we used to have the next element. Okay, so it seems that we handle all of the cases, but not really, because if we output this to code words, it will complain and it will try to fail with other commands that are not any of those. So how do we handle this? Well, since we are pattern matching in Haskell and pattern matching is awesome, we say that for any other command, we're just going to ignore it and keep the recursion going. Okay, so let's load this up in our REPL. Let's check it out. This, we're going to parse this and see what happens. Awesome, so it seems that it's working. Let's try it out in code words and see if we are good to go. Test. Nice, so it looks like we did it. But now let's get a bit more fancy. 
Um, we're going to do something similar to this, but not quite exactly. We're going to use um, a monad called RWS, which is like a, a sum of the read monad, the reader monad, the state monad, and the writer monad. So you can import it either from MTL or transformers. I'm going to use MTL because um, the import looks nicer. So import control monad. Well, let me know if I know how to spell control monad RWS. And we are going to import RWS monad. Tell modify get and eval rws i think this is all we need and for now we're going to ignore this and say that we're going to eval our rws with some function The, re the environment for the reader monad is an empty tuple, it's nothing, and the, and the state is going to be zero. So let's have a look. Let's remove this for now. Undefined. And here we want a function that it's going to take a char and it's going to return the reader writer state monad and the, the reader environment that we're going to provide is nothing because we're not going to use the reader monad here. The writer state is our end result is going to be a list of int. The state that we want to accumulate that start by zero is going to be an int. And then we need to find uh, end with an empty tool. So how does this work? Well, let's handle all the cases first. And we're going to say that in case our command is i, we're going to call the function modify with plus one. Awesome. In case our command is d, we're going to apply the flip version of minus of one, great. In case is an S, we want to also call modify, calling the function exp. In case is an O, we're going to do something else. And what happens if it's any other command? How do you tell the moment to don't do anything? Well, to just do pure unit because we're in the context of a monad. So this computation will do absolutely nothing. So what happens in the O case? Well, in the O case, we need to get the value that we have from the state monad. And now we need to pipe it into a lambda that we're going to call n. And then we're going to tell the writer monad to add a list with that element. Looks nice, right? Great. So now we have a function that uh, expects a char and returns the reader writer state monad. But how do we use this? How do we run it with eval? What's this? What is this waiting for? Well, actually, if you remember, we're going to uh, receive a string here, and then we need to apply to every character of the element this computation. So we need to accumu accumulate a series of effects. Uh, by a certain function. This is the function that we're going to use, but what function do we always use when we want to apply a series of effects and accumulate them somewhere? Well, you guessed it right. It's our dear friend Traverse. By the function go with all the string. Great, so let's see if this is compiling. Looks good. And now what happens if we call parse? Oh, interesting. So we're accumulating everything. So you see eval returns 
Evaluate a computation with a given initial state and environment, returning the final value and output, discarding the final state. So what we really want is the output, but we're being returned uh, a tuple with the final value, which we don't care about, and the output. So we need to append here uh, second from the tuple functions. And now our type signature is correct again. Let's see. Great, and this worked exactly the same. Let's check it out in code words and see if it works. Test. Oops, okay, I messed up this. So the name is not exactly the same as my environment. That's to be expected. The module is different. Let's try it now. Awesome. And now for the final run. Not final yet. Great. So it, it passed. So as you see, um, we can pretty much resolve uh, any looping problem in, ha in Haskell with recursion, but sometimes it's it's nice if we use of this uh, Kirky monads like reader and state and uh, writer, and if we combine them all in the R R W S monad, uh, the solution is, is is quite nice. Obvious, obviously, this is an overkill for this problem, but I I I thought it might be a nice exercise and features our favorite function traverse. So hope you enjoy the video and see you next time.